Yankees leading 2 1, middle of the fourth inning. Myers, Kemp, and Salarte against Chad Green in the home half of the fourth. And a busy day in the booth, thank goodness. A very interesting day. And A.J. Prella, the general manager of the Padres, joins us. And the international signing period began over the weekend. And you and uh, your mates have been very busy uh, with a checkbook and, uh, and a pen. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a really active day, obviously. On the, you know the first day, you can officially sign players that are 16 years old on the international side was July 2nd, and yesterday we ended up signing. Uh, you know, those are some names on that, that that the fans are looking at right now. We signed uh, some of the best guys in Latin America and, and throughout the world, so we're excited. The Padres never have gone into the international market and made that kind of haul. Yeah, no, it's uh, it was a you know I think a big day. We feel like organizationally, I think it's something we've been planning for for the last you know year, year plus. Chris Kemp, our international scouting director, and his group. There's Myers continuing his line drive hitting, cutting it off is Ellsbury. Myers will settle for a leadoff hit. You know they uh, they prepared really well throughout the year, put us in position to have you know that you know to to have the uh, you know the, the ability to make an impact, and I think it's just kind of consistent with what we've been talking about over the last. Over the last year, ultimately, you know, from a talent standpoint, continue building up to get to where we need to get to as an organization, which is you've got to have numbers. You've got to have a lot of guys. And I think when we look at the draft that we had this past, you know, the early June and then the international period, some of the trades we've been making, we're starting to build it up. You're starting to see it in the minor league system, and uh, it's going to make an impact here in Petco in the future. AJ, I know it's five shortstops, three pitchers, and then there's more players, outfielders and catchers. But any reason why you specifically went shortstop heavy, or were these kids just the best type of athletes, baseball slash players that uh, that you saw. Yeah, no, I think um, you know. In general, I think you know when you know when we're looking at, it, I always like to build up the middle and build with you know with guys that, that could play the premium positions. But it, you know, I think you know those those are the guys that we felt like were the best this year at their spots. And I think shortstops, you know, it's uh, again in Latin America, a lot of times kids just naturally gravitate. You know, almost everybody in tryouts goes to play shortstops, and we've got to filter that out and see who plays. You know, <laughs> who should be in other positions. But I think. You know, kind of traditionally that, you know, guys want to be the next impact shortstop. And I know, you know, just in, in some of the things, you know, you see with other clubs I've seen in my background, you, you sign a lot of shortstops. They can go out and play other positions right. on the field and impact you that way. So how many of these kids? And I know you, you like to get uh, to see them in person, but that's a that's a long list. How many of those have you actually seen on a ball field? Uh, I, I've seen pretty much everybody we signed, honestly. I think, uh, you know, I, I you know, had the ability throughout the you know, really in the last year, year plus, to see to see a lot of players. Luis Almanzar, uh, shortstop, we signed out of the Dominican Republic. He actually has a unique. He came you know a year ago and he played at American Heritage High School, one of the best high schools in in the country for baseball. Well, here's a look at Luis. Luis right here, and he's just a really he's a really he's a natural hitter. He's a comfortable hitter. It's a right-handed bat. He plays shortstop. You can see him there in the box. How comfortable he is there. How old um, is he? 16 years 16. old. 16. So, and he he was a conference player of the year last year as a freshman in one of the top conferences in Florida high school baseball. He went back to the Dominican, uh, where he's from, and uh, and signed. We signed him here on July 2. He's got a chance to be a really good player. Boy, it looks he, like he has good hands. Yeah. Huh? If he could field like that on that parking lot where he was just <laughs> playing, imagine him playing on a manicured field, even in the minor leagues nowadays, because you know how well manicured these fields are. Yeah. He looks very slick out there. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the field where Yvonne Deboa has uh, has 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 a you know training baseball program, and definitely is not the uh, you know the smooth fields that we see here yeah. in the states. And Yvonne's developed players such as Nomar Mazar and and Jorge Bonifacio, Emilio Bonifacio, some good big leaguers that come off that field, and uh, hopefully Luis Almanzar will be the next guy. Now, there are also a couple of uh, Cuban players that seem to be highly touted, uh, not just by the Padres, but others. Uh, but they have not signed as yet with anyone. Yeah, it's still. I mean, it's still the, the Cuban market is still a pretty fluid market. You know, I think there's, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of players leave Cuba. It's probably a little different than in the past. In the past, it was the big name guys that have been on the national team for a long time, mm -hmm. coming out like 26, 27, 28 years old. Um, you know, there's Yulieski Guriel right now that is out there. That's that's a free agent. But you know, the, the Cuban players that are on the market right now are more guys that were kind of the next wave guys, the 16 to, to 20 year old Cubans that would have been, you know, kind of the next the next group of Cuban national team members. And you know, there's there's uh, there, there's some guys that have been out there in, in the media. But you know, I think that you wait for those guys to be made eligible by Major League Baseball. And we've scouted, you know, lar you know, pretty much a large number of those guys and be prepared if those guys come out to. To at least uh, be in position to make a move if we want to. Here's Salarte homered his last time for the Padre run, and he fouls that out of play. Now, of that list we've just seen, 
Is there a player you could point out that is closest to getting to the big leagues. I mean they're all going to go. I assume all of those will go to one of the minor league clubs. Yeah. No, it's, it's I mean I think for the most part the guys we're talking about you know are you know the guys that we signed especially on July 2 it's 16 year old players. So I think you know even if any if, even if everything goes you know according to plan and, and you know guys you know they, they reach each stage of development at their you know at their earliest possible you know age for the most part you're talking about them impacting our club at 19 20 years old. So I think we've looked at this you know in terms of like trying to add talent to the system. You know it's it's, it's you know it's a couple of different layers. You know you have the draft in which you're able to get guys you know, we were able to add college players in the draft, high school players in the draft that might start their development stage a little bit, you know, at a little closer mm -hmm. point to the They'd big league level. They'd be two or three years old. Exactly. And then, you know. There's Salarte drilling one past Teixeira. And on his run is Myers, but quick fielding in right field. And Myers will have to hold at third on a double by Salarte. So this 2-1 game, Salarte positions himself and Myers to score and take the lead with one out. So yeah, I think you know. Then you know, I think we obviously you know you try to you know pair that with some of the players from the international market. They're probably a little bit further away. The right-hand pitcher that we agreed to last night from Taiwan, uh, Wen Hei Sung. He's uh, he's he's you know he's a 19, you know, 20 year old you know college player in Taiwan. He's probably a little bit more advanced on the pitching side than some of the pitchers that we signed on July 2nd. Uh, he probably would fit more in with our A-ball pitchers and. Uh, but most of the, but the players that we signed yesterday, they, they will they, they will not play this year in in affiliated baseball. Their season starts next year. You know, you start with your 17-year-old season, and those guys will get out in the system next year. Okay. So their their introduction to baseball, they'll go down into our Dominican complex. They'll start basically almost in a, like a, like a pre-instructional program, almost a scout ball program, where they'll play you know 20 plus games in 30 days with our instructors to start getting used to you know Padre baseball what, what, you know what we what they're going to see what they're going to teach what they're going to see in our system get used to the grind of playing every single day and then really their first step in their careers are starting in September with instructional league in Arizona with you know our best prospects so spanning the globe AJ Preller <laughs> yeah, hey I mean, tell us about this guy who throws both ways ambidextrous the the kid from Siberia he throws like 110 <laughs> if there's, there's a kid out, out there you'll find him yeah he's out there Chris Kemp is, is probably on it so yeah <laughs> Yeah, Siberia Sam, they call him. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Dickerson, a chance to get the Padres with an out, a tie, and with a base hit, the lead. Dickerson struck out his first time, and now getting a chance to show what he can do on a more regular basis after great numbers at El Paso, where he was hitting 382 with 10 homers and 51 runs batted in. Yeah, I think with Dickerson, you know, he's. Obviously went down and, and, and you know played tremendous at El Paso and I think you know, his experiences so far in the big leagues it's always been kind of a spot start here and there and haven't really been able to get him consistent at bats which you know most guys when they break into the big leagues that's kind of the way it goes but you know I think uh, you know I think he, he's obviously earned the opportunity to come back here and still you know still still looking for the spot where we can write him in the lineup every day and, and see what you know what he can accomplish at AAA if that translates here to the big leagues. Well, good hitters count right here three and one. Up the middle, oh, a great play by the pitcher. Then back to second, and a double play. Oh, my. A reaction stab by Green, and he turns it into a double play. Well, thank you, A.J., for spending some time with us. Thank you. Can't wait. We'll see some of these kids maybe in spring training just to get a peek, huh? For sure. All for right. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, A.J. Happy fourth. Thank you.